Eric Gardner, John Crawford III, Michael Brown, Ethel Ford, Dante Parker, Michelle Casso, Laquan McDonald, George Mann, Tanisha Anderson, Kai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Anton Rose the Third, Bottom Jean, Pamela Turner, Dominic Clayton, Atayana Jefferson, Chris Christopher Whitfield, Brianna Taylor, and recently George Floyd. These are all names of people being killed in the states by police, by violence against Black Americans, and it's just shocking that it's still going on. It's not stopping. In an ideal world, this would not be happening, but it still is. Naively me, I'm having a small hope that because of what's happening lately after George Floyd's death, all the rights, that maybe, maybe something changes for the better, for real, in a big scale. But I suppose it's a bit of a long shot if something for real was going to happen. But anyway, to make the world better, you have to start with yourself. And uh, on the quest to start to bettering the world and bettering myself, bettering the world, it sounds so pompous. Uh, well, okay, in in a quest to doing what little I can do to help stuff, to help the world and that sounds weird as well but I want to do to do something and so after these last few weeks I started to look at my bookshelves and start to think how many books do I have by black authors by African American authors or black English authors or by or by just African authors or Caribbean authors and when I realized how many I had, I, was, I wasn't shocked, but I was a bit embarrassed because saying how many is a bit wrong because I don't have that many. I have, let me show you. Oh. I have only five books that are by persons of, no, sorry, that are by black people. And these are uh these are a mix of uh some of them are well I suppose most of them are written by one person. This is an anthology, so you would have other races as well. Not that you shouldn't read a people of color in general, but yeah. Uh so honestly, I kinda of feel like this is is too little. I suppose yes, there's lots of different stuff you can do to help. You can you don't have to buy all the books that you read. You can donate money and stuff. But I think one way that you can help, at least in my mind, is by supporting black authors by reading their stories as well, and to make an effort to finding black stories. And I haven't really done that so far. I've, I suppose I've slightly done that. I have some black authors on my TBR, but on my physical shelf I don't have that many and as I said that kind of embarrasses me so I, firstly I want to show you the books that I have here just talk a bit more about them because the ones that I have I mean I, will, I want to show off them because I have them and yeah and then I want to talk a bit more so I have yeah, I'm a bit basic, but yeah, I have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Nicola Yoon is an African American author. She is both Jamaican. She grew up in Jamaica, but she lives now in New York. And this is a contemporary book that came out a few years ago, four years ago. How many years ago is it now? Yeah, six, five years ago now, 2015. And you probably heard of it, it's been all over. But yeah, it's about African-American teen. Well, uh, her mom's uh, African-American and her dad is Korean. So she's mixed biracial. And it's about 
Uh, it's about her struggle with her health and her finding first love. So it's not about race directly, but it tackles race in some ways. And it has different uh, diverse aspects. Her friend, her teacher is uh, is Hispanic. And yeah, so we have different aspects like those. Nicola Ryun has, to my knowledge at least, I might be wrong here, but I think she only has so far written two books. This one and Sun is Also a Star. They've both be turn been turned into movies. I really enjoyed this one. I DNF'd Sun is Also a Star. It wasn't really for me. I like Nicola Ryun, but I suppose it's kind of difficult or it's rare that you like all the books from all the authors. So, yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed this book. It's a really good book to check out if you want to check out in the contemporary of contemporary read from a black author. So that's kind of an old actually, but I didn't say it, but yeah, it's an old favorite of mine. I very much enjoy it. Old favorite of mine. Well, I still haven't read it in years. Well, I remember loving it when I read it, so I want to say it's an old favorite. And then we have. <coughs> A book that's just a bit, that's a bit, uh, words, that's a bit, uh, known. No, it's not a word to think about. That's familiar, familiar to you. Because I recently talked about it in another video, and that's An Extraordinary Union by Elsa Cole. So you see, mm, the, it's a historical book, and it's a historical book protagonist that's African American. The, I was about to show you a picture. Oh yeah, the author is also African American. It doesn't say like exactly, but she is African American. And um, Nicole Unish is Jamaican. It doesn't say here. I suppose she's. I think yeah. I think actually she's like African American in way that she was descended from slaves. So I suppose sadly she doesn't really know where in Africa her. Uh, heritage it's from, but yeah, she's African American. Oh, this sounds weird, but yeah, hopefully. I'm not saying stuff that's too wrong, and if I am, please just yell at me in the comments. Uh, but yeah, this book is a very good book. It's own voices because protagonist is African American, which is also the author. It's a, a, it's a historical book. Uh, with African American protagonist, which you don't really see that often. For some reason, historicals are often just flooded with white women and white people, and that's just very weird. And yeah, I really uh, appreciate this one. I think a lot of people do. I suppose a lot of people do it more than me because they like seeing people in historical settings look like them, black. But yeah, I also like to enjoy this, to read one, this one as a white woman. And yeah, this is a very good book. If you want to read more Book of Black offers, I would check this offer out and this book out. Alisa Cole, she writes mostly, well mostly, she's written other books that's contemporary, uh, that's contemporary romance. But she has this also, it's a series, so she has at least three historical books. So she writes both historical and contemporary. And I think she also writes some sci-fi. Yeah, she does. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check out Black Offers, check out Alyssa Cole. She writes very good. Both funny and impactful and great characters and you should definitely check her out. It's one of, she's one of my new favorite offers, really. And then you have... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. One that's like cheating. It's not cheating, but this was in a bit of a caveat. So, Okay, I'm just gonna get to it. Uh, it's Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. He's biracial, so his uh, his dad is Swiss German. His dad is, I think his dad's German. I'm pretty sure, yeah, his dad is German. Anyway, his dad is Caucasian, white, and his mom is South African. So he's, uh, he's both white and black. Well, yeah. Is biracial, but biracial people are still black, and ugh, this feels so weird to say it. I feel like I'm saying something wrong here, but 
Yeah, but Asian people are still black. Uh, so this is still a black, uh, of course, it's still a black narrative, next black story. And this is actually also the only non-fiction book uh, that I have, my own, that's from a black person. So I read this, I think, two or three years ago. Really, very much enjoyed it. It gives a good insight in how to be a black and during apartheid, how to how to be black, how it was to be black during apartheid, how it was to be black in South Africa, and how it is to be just from Noah as well, like his specifically experience as well, not just his blackness. And yeah, also I think it's kind of good also to not simply read uh Stories that like offers that non fiction, no, non fiction, fiction, but also try to pick up non fiction because there's a lot of non fiction out there that will help you understand things more. I'm saying that like I know that, like I read that much non fiction, I don't, but I want to try to read more of it. And uh, I suppose, in a way, like reading biographies helps you, like, uh, understand more like people's struggles and stuff and how they handle the world and how they're met in the world and stuff. But I suppose also like reading stories on Jim Crow, reading stories on apartheid and slavery, slavery area, area, era would also be like a good starting point to understand more of the world and like I suppose also like to understand how is what is today. You kind of have to know the history of stuff. So yeah, but yeah, this one is also very good. Oh, Why would I be talking about books that aren't good? I don't know. I'm just gonna say that sometimes this is also very good. But yeah, it's a very good book. And I definitely urge you to, urge you to check it out. And then I have Truly Madly Royally, which is another contemporary book. This one actually came out last year, so it's uh, pretty recent and very floppy, but very good. And the author, but I said I want to talk about black offers, so of course this offer is black, but I'm just gonna show you because I am. Um, and yeah, she's African American. She's yeah, African American. And she has she has this uh, book. I think this is actually her first book. Let me just double check. I feel like it's not her first book, it might be her first book. Anyway, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but yeah, and so this is a book where protagonist is words, Sora, and that girl, and she's a, a grade A student, and she wants to go to college and stuff. So she takes a she takes a summer course at the college college uh, in New York, and she meets him, and he is. Uh, Owen, a uh, European prince of a fictional country, as they often do in books and film movies. But yeah, so it's a fun, very little fun romance story. But it's also not just romance, it's also about Sora's uh, challenges to get good grades, her challenges in her life. It's not, it's not very heavy, it's not full of uh, prejudice and racism, but there's some of it there. So just so you know, so if you want to, if you want a little fun, light-hearted romance with a black American protagonist, I would say check this book out. It's very delightful and very nice. Perfect actually for now for the summer months. It's really good and good, good and good. It's really enjoyable and good. Highly recommend it. Because yeah, so black authors, of course, as all authors, they write all different stuff. They don't only write about racism and prejudice, they might sometimes just write fluffy romance, fun romances. It's not always the doom and gloom, though of course they are important, but it's also important to have books where, and read books where blacks are just people that have stories and lives, and it's not just centered around the blackness, even though that's always some part of the story, but yeah. And then lastly, we have Meet Cute, which, as I said earlier, it's an anthology. So it has lots of authors. Uh, and one of them is Donnell Clayton. Donnell Clayton, she's black. And then you also have Nicola Yoon, she writes in this one as well. 
and Ivi Suboy. Suboy, yeah. And then you also have, I think that's the, I think that's it for black part of it. So I suppose there's not that many black offers in it, but there are some free black offers, at some at least. Uh, this one I actually haven't read myself yet, but I, I own it, so I want to do a, put it here and just show, show you, show it to you. It's a book around set around mute cutes, so it's romance, and and it's both it both has gay and lesbian and straight and all the all the different sexualities in this one. So yeah, I really can't wait to get it. Might pick it up soon because pride but yeah i really want really anticipating getting to this one as well so yeah as i said um that's not that's five books out of how many books i own i think that's probably around like 500 maybe more so yeah uh i'm feeling very ashamed of that that i don't own more books by black authors i do i suppose Depending on how you look at the subject, I do have some books. I suppose as all, as a lot, as what say all, all people do, as a lot of people do. I have some books where the characters are uh, people of colors, while the authors aren't, or some books where the side characters but not the protagonists. So I do have some books with like that, but and that's good as well. I mean, it's good that not black authors. Is, it's black authors. That black stories not simply in black author stories, but that is, they're everywhere because they are everywhere. As I said recently, recently I read a story, a story, a series, and felt like, what? Where are all the black people? I just felt felt weird that they weren't really represented. It. So like now I'm actually gotten to a point where I kind of feel, I kind of feel like I, I expect diversity in all my books, even though it's not marketed as much. I kind of want all the books to be diverse in some point or another. And if they're not, I'm disappointed. So yeah. <coughs> and yeah, and as I said, I've I have some, but yeah, it's way too few, honestly. I feel like it's way way too few. Uh yeah, also if I were to expand the if I was to talk about books uh, of persons of color, <coughs> I would have some more book to show you because <clears throat> sorry i have some books by asians and some books well, so some books asians some books by asians uh sorry i have some books by yeah some books by asians and well, i suppose yeah that's about it i don't really think i have yeah so like if, except these i have some books by asian of asian authors <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so that I suppose it's something, but it's far from acceptable. Acceptable. But yeah, honestly, I think at least for myself, I feel like it's far from acceptable. Far from acceptable. Though, um, so yeah, my plan is to read much more my back offers and focus much more also in general on POC offers. I recently uh, asked some friends to give me recommendations, so I now have a huge list to look at <clears throat> and I plan to I plan for the fall to <clears throat> sorry give me a moment I completely forgot I also have the wedding gate wedding date wedding gates the wedding date by Jasmine Guillory African American author she wrote uh, this book pretty recently and she's kind of been a me up and coming Romance uh, or adult offer, and yeah, I really recommended this offer. But yeah, I read there, as you might think, uh, assume, and yeah, she's very good. But yeah, uh, still, six books with so many books I own, it's embarrassing, honestly. I think it's just so. <sighs> it's embarrassing. I have way too few. I have recently ordered some books that I think some of them are by per persons of color. I'm not quite sure, but if, anyway, I plan to read much more. I do. And uh, yeah, that's all my physical books that I have of persons, black 
black, black people. And uh, my, a little talk about uh, my talk and um, my thoughts around them. And um, I'll say, I feel, I'll say like, don't feel shame. But honestly, yeah, if you see this video and you think, oh, I have less than Renee, maybe I should have many more. I'm so ashamed. Yeah, honestly, feel ashamed because buying books by black authors by people of color shouldn't be that difficult. There's tons of them out there. There's tons of them being released this year, last year, a year before that. There's tons of them coming out next year, like you can pre-order stuff. It shouldn't be that difficult to really to find them. If you can't really know where to start, if you already know, like, if you like romances, if you like fantasy, just Google fantasy books by black authors or diverse authors or POC or you can check it out on, Google, on YouTube and see if anyone has recommended any books by that uh, in a video. I mean, it's not that difficult. Or go to Goodreads and look at the lists. I suppose not all lists are reliable, but most lists are reliable in some way. And uh, yeah, it really shouldn't be that difficult. And for example, like, if you want to read more black like offers, but you're not very really sure what to start or like how to do it, well, Jasmine Gallery, she's written lots of books, so you can simply buy all the books. I suppose it might be bad if you don't enjoy romance or if you don't enjoy the writing style, but like, if you like, that's that's really the, a great perk, really. Like, if you write, if you end up li liking an author, you finally have a backlist that you can check out. Like, as I said, I read lots of, as it's called, lots of, I read three of her books so far. Well, this is the fourth one. But she has small books, and I want to get to more of them. I'm just so pleased that she has small books that I can enjoy. So, yeah. You really, it really shouldn't be that difficult, really. It really shouldn't. And lots of these books, honestly, have, like, been out there. I suppose that's, in a way, maybe why I'm a bit ashamed, because... This, at least to me, are kind of basic bitch books. This has been everywhere. Of course, you shouldn't look down on books that are everywhere, but like, it's just so easy to read those books that are available everywhere and are just um, accessible. But you can find like the hidden gems or the less known books as well. Find the books that aren't getting that much attention and try them out as well, which is something I want to do at least. And, uh, yeah, so this has been quite a video now, and um, I'll do another video soon about some audiobooks, because, yeah, I actually have some audiobooks that I sent you that are written by black authors, so that's something. I thought first to do it in one video, but I thought this video has become quite long, so I'll just split them, split them in two. Also, I actually, I never talked and said again and again, like, this other six books that I own by back offers. I've forgotten to kind of like uh, f focus to kind of uh, paraphrase, no, to kind of to emphasize that it's not like I haven't read other books by back offers, but these are the ones I own and I kind of want to own more. Uh, but as I said, yeah, I have read more and I have two suggestions that I've read that I don't own that I'll give you a link in the video. One is Noffs and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. She's a British black author, uh, or Baby, as they say in Britain, British Asian uh, minority author. Uh, and she's written uh, the series uh, Noffs and Crosses uh, in addition to other series. I've read the first book in the series. Uh, I haven't read the second or third or fourth book yet. I kind of want to. Do I think they're uh, companions? I suppose you don't have to read them all, but yeah. But yeah, Noffs and Courses is, I think, either a bit like The Hate You Give, but not quite. Uh, so the idea is that uh, it's a contemporary book, but it's an alternative world. So in this world, in Noffs and Courses world, uh, the black people are the rich people, the people with privilege, and the white people are the people being uh, supp suppressed and people uh, who have no rights. So it's all turned on its head. 
but accept that everything is the same. So all the history, like the history, they, the white people, white people used to be slaves for black people, and they used to have apartheid and all that stuff. But now stuff are better, but not perfect. There's still racism and stuff going on. And uh, so yeah, it's just a very good, interesting look, really. It just kind of shakes you up a bit, at least for me, as a white person, to write, read that narrative. But it's also quite really good, very interesting book, sorry. <clears throat> and uh, also, though, a bit of a trigger warning, and the reason why I didn't really read on, because I suppose kind of because of how how big the tensions are in this story, as was also makes it realistic. Uh, it gets quite violent now and then, so trigger war warning for violence. But it's still it's a good book to check out when you're in the mood or when you feel like forcing or when you when you're in the mood to read something real and hard hitting, but still important. And that's a book I definitely recommend to check out. Then I will also check will check out yeah I will also recommend you check out um, one drop of blood no sorry one drop of water by uh, Timbuktu or uh, Jason by Jason Mbuktu I think it's Mbuktu okay so normally he's a Swedish rapper or African uh, Swedish rapper his parents actually are both from the States uh, one is a Caucasian woman and one is an African American so he's biracial and he came up with a biography last year two years ago now last year maybe pretty uh, recently anyway uh, I'll link there I'll have the date in the uh, and he writes very eloquently and good about both about being black in Scandinavia and how he faces racism in Sweden in a way how it's not all roses and sun sunshine even though uh, I suppose we don't have that many police killings it's still not easy here in Scandinavia um, but it also talks about uh, how it was for, for his dad how that's how it was for his dad how it was for his dad's uh, relations his dad's uh, family uh, like the family history and stuff and it's just a very good look really at the situation and I would definitely recommend you check it out so I'm gonna link those two in the W and yeah I hope you've gotten some good, good recommendations good recommendations book recommendations oh and good recognitions from this video I hope maybe you started to get some ideas and thoughts from this video hopefully I haven't been babbling too much nonsense and uh, yeah uh, I'll also be linking some relevant links to uh, Black Lives Matter in Dublin as well as I said I'm gonna keep on doing that and uh, yeah uh, other than that yeah also if you choose uh, I didn't say this yesterday because I didn't wasn't that aware but it's like you should be teaching you should be learning and evolving every day or like how as much as you can uh, so yesterday and then the last week as well I put links to black booktubers but I didn't really say anything more than just black booktubers now I'm going to phrase it with even though black booktubers, um, they of course deserve attention and subscribers, don't just subscribe randomly because they're black booktubers. What I urge you to do is check out the um, the whoops, the playlist of black black booktubers, and then click on if you want all of them or some of them. Watch one video, watch two videos, watch part of one video, and then decide. Okay, is this a black a uh, booktuber that interests me? That reads stuff that I want to learn more about. That has a cool vibe. That's uh, that has good uh, good ideas and that uh, yeah that appeals to me. If it doesn't, then don't just click subscribe 
automatically automatically because because that you should or because it's trendy. Even though black booktubers should get more attention, you don't want to give them the want to go you don't want to give them shallow likes and simply click like and subscribe because it's trendy. You should do it because it's what you feel is right because uh, because you also feel like this booktuber appeals to you. Because just shallow likes is not cool at all. It's not it's not fun at all. It's just, just silly really. Because as anything, you kind of you don't want people to smile at you or pity you or well or pity you or give you attention because they should. You want them to give you attention because they enjoy being with you. That they enjoy talking to you. That it's not because someone said they should, but because they enjoy it and they feel like it's comfortable and good and right. So yeah, think a little before you click subscribe. And yeah, this video ended up being a bit long, but kind of expected to be a bit long. But yeah, um, so I hope you had some stuff to think about now. And yeah, this is me, Sing Renee, out.